Hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Kevin, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at how we can make a single page website that automatically scrolls up and down when we click on the navigation links. And while it's doing that, while it's going up and down, the active link is going to change. So it's going to show the user where they are on the page. You should see an example of it going on uh, that get you to know what you're getting yourself into with this video. Okay guys, here's the page that we're going to be working on. As you can see, I did do this in CodePen, so the link for this is down below. If you want to come in here, play with the code, do what you want, make a fork of it, whatever it is, uh, you can jump in there and do that. It's a really simple just throw together that I put up for this where we have three sections, uh, sort of like what you might see on a site, but not you know nothing, nothing too great looking, but it, for our purposes, it's gonna be perfect. Um, I did use Bootstrap to put this together. So if we look at, if you jump into the HTML on this, you will notice it, it is all done with the Bootstrap classes and all of that. The only thing that you might see that's a little bit different is on my three links up here, I added a class of scroll and I'm gonna be using that to select in the in my JavaScript or my jQuery. So we're gonna see that really, really shortly. And if you're not even sure right now, just to show you, when I click on this, it's just jumping from one section to the next. And well, that's fine. Um, and the way I did that, if you're not sure, is my href is looking just for a a hashtag of top and the hashtag there of top is looking for the ID of top and then the next one is my features and that one clicks down to my ID of features and pricing obviously goes down to pricing so it works um, and it jumps around I personally find it a much nicer user experience when it actually just scrolls to the location instead of jumping when it jumps sometimes you actually think you're on a different page in the site and then in then you realize that you're scrolled three quarters of the way down, you scroll up a little bit, and then you realize, oh, it's a single page site. I didn't, you know, it's not that it causes major confusion, but I think that it's a lot nicer when you can click through and it smooth scrolls. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna smooth scroll. We're gonna make the links work so it smooth scrolls. But I did also use the bootstrap class active here on this one because I do find it's nice when we're scrolling down that it's highlighting, you know, when I get to features, that's gonna jump automatically over to features. And then when I get down to the pricing, it's automatically gonna jump over to the pricing. Again, for user experience, I find that makes it really nice um, and helps the user experience a little bit when you're also highlighting in the navigation where you are. Because maybe someone's scrolling just like this, but when you see it jumping over, you know you're reaching other sections. It can just be a little bit nicer. So we're gonna do both of those. The first one of the smooth scrolling is a little bit easier. So if you're not very familiar or too deep into jQuery, the that one will probably be quite easy to follow along with, whereas the second one might be a little bit more difficult, but I will do my best to explain everything I'm doing. Um, for all of this, I'm not gonna be referencing the CSS at all. And the only thing that's really important at all with my HTML is the fact that I've added this class of scroll here. Um, so I'm just gonna shrink that down because the JS here is what we're worried about the most. And I have linked to the jQuery CDN here. So if you are doing this on your own site and not um, a CodePen site, just make sure you are linking to uh, jQuery in one way or another. Awesome. So with all of that out of the way, let's actually get into what we want to be doing. So the very first thing that I would uh, suggest that you do most of the time is do a document ready. So when my document is ready, we want to do a function, right? Function. And my function. Um, so this is a very common thing you'll see with jQuery. And it's pretty much saying once the whole page is loaded, then you can do this. And it's just to make sure that the JavaScript that we're doing, which can take a little bit longer to execute, doesn't actually slow down the rest of the page. In general, you're probably linking to your JavaScript at the bottom anyway, but uh, you know, some places like WordPress and all that, a lot of the time you'll find a lot of JavaScript linked to at in the head, and you don't want this to get in the way of all the other things happening, uh, just in case it slows down the loading of your site. So when my document is ready, we can start doing some stuff. So the first thing I'm gonna do is a variable called scroll link, and that's just gonna be equal to my uh, those, those links I've made. So I've put a class on those already of scroll. So uh, I'm doing this as a variable just because this is a pain sort of to write out each time. So I'm gonna make a variable of scroll link. So my links that when I click on them, I want it to scroll. And we'll be using this a few times as we go along. 
So the first thing, and this is for our smooth scrolling. So let's put that in now. Uh, smooth scrolling. Scrolling? Scrolling? Is that right? That's right. Okay. So smooth scrolling. What are we going to do? So to get this to work, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, say when we click on a scroll link. So scroll link, click. So when I click on one of my scroll links, I want something to happen. So we want a function. Now this function, it's going to be a little bit different because I'm going to put a little e here. And what this means is it's short for event. You could even write event here if you want to. You could put any letter you want in there, really. I'm just going to put an e because it's nice and short because there's an event happening. And the event is when I click. When I'm clicking on one of these, it's jumping down to here. And I don't want it to do that because if it jumps, then there's nothing to animate. So what I'm going to say is when this event happens, we want to prevent the default from happening. So now I've pretty much broken my links. Now if I click on them, nothing is happening. I'm preventing the default action of jumping down to that section from happening at all. So there's my prevent default. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to select my body. So we're going to select body. Uh, and I'm also going to select my HTML as well. So jQuery, select my body and my HTML. and the main reason, from what I understand, that we do both of these, because I used to only put body, um, is some browsers apparently it works better or are dealing more with the HTML for this, and others it's the body, so we can treat them sort of as one big element just by doing it like this. And what we want to do is we want to do an animation. So we're going to do dot animate. Now this animate method that jQuery gives us is really cool. Um, and the reason it's really cool is I actually need to put in, I can put in a bunch of stuff into an animate. And the idea with it is that you're animating a CSS property, but it's a little bit different because usually with all these, you know, you're doing a, a function and then you have open close or prevent default, uh, all these methods, you're putting something like that. With the animate, you're also going to have these squiggly braces in here. And what the animate is doing is it's looking for CSS properties. So you could say width, I want to animate my width and then you could change what you want your width to be, you know, 50. And then here you would be d saying how long you want that to take. So you're giving a duration. So it'd be comma and then duration. So animate your CSS property. So you're choosing a CSS property to animate and how long it's going to take. So I'm just going to actually change how this looks a little bit. Um, just because it's a little bit cleaner to look at it like this. And we'll jump down right to here. Uh, <clears throat> now, normally you're looking at doing it with um, CSS properties, but it also ex something, accepts something called scroll top. And scroll top is pretty much looking at the location of the scroll bar. How far down or up, it's, it's measuring where you've scrolled to pretty much. So scroll top, it's measuring where we are. And we want to scroll top and we want to go to this hash. So this hash, this ID, this section, right? And so we're going to go to this hash. And I'm, I'm getting an error. I think that's just from this here. Yeah, OK. And we're going to get the offset top from that hash. So what this means is uh, I want to know where, how far away from the top of my page that that hash is or that section is. So that section, which is here, how far away from the top is it? And we want to bring our scroll bar to that location. So we're, we're bringing that down to here. And then we're going to bring it down to here automatically. So with that done, I think it's actually going to work right now. Yeah, it does. OK, but you can see it's going really fast. So I mentioned you can put the duration in there. So right here and that's why I had the comma comma and then you can put your duration in and the duration has to be in milliseconds whenever you're doing durations or timing events in uh, JavaScript it's gonna be in milliseconds so you, it's not like in CSS where I could do a thousand milliseconds like that or I could do one second it doesn't work you just put a number so 1000 would be 1000 milliseconds which is equal to one second if you want to slow it down there's two seconds or 500 would be half a second and I'm gonna stick with a thousand in this case so now it should take a second to do my animation. And there we go. It is a nice smooth scrolling up and down. And it looks really, really nice, I think. 
and that's actually all we need to do to animate it. So again, I'm preventing the default action from happening. Then I'm animating my body. I'm scrolling from the top to the offset top of my hash. So how far down is this? And then I'm going to scroll that to that exact location right there. So that's my smooth scroll. But right now, obviously, my home is still the active link. And that looks really weird when you click on features and then home is still highlighted. That's confusing. So this next part, as I mentioned, is a little bit more complicated, but it's not so bad. So I'm going to call this, um, let's put a little comment here for um, active link switching, I guess. Not the best title for that, but whatever. I think it gets the point across. Um, so for this one, the active links are only ever going to change when we're scrolling. If the page is stationary, nothing's really going on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, we're going to select our window and we're going to say when our window scrolls. So all of this is only going to happen when my window is scrolling. And once again, we've, as usual, have to do a function. Now for this function, we're going to make another variable. So that variable is going to be called, I'm going to call it scroll bar location because it's keeping track of where our scroll bar is pretty much. And to do this, I'm going to say, I want to select this. We're going to say this and we're going to say scroll top. And you'll notice here it's a scroll top and the two little things here. And here it's the, the actual method that I'm using. So it's not part of the animate. It's the way you'd normally see it. So I'm saying scroll top and I'm having to put my parentheses here. So that is important that the scroll top has the parentheses here. And to show you what that's actually doing, let's throw up a little console log here. Console logs are super useful when you're not really sure uh, what exactly is going on. So whenever I scroll, I want to have my scroll bar location come up. So let's go check that out. Scroll bar location. And we'll pull up my inspect element. I'm going to have some errors in here because I'm linking to bootstrap, but um, it wants tether, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. Uh, when I scroll, so you see the number here is going up and up and up. So it's tracking how far down have I scrolled pretty much. How far, you know, where's the location of my scroll bar? And we're going all the way back up and it gets to zero. So it's keeping track of where we are on our page more or less. And I'll close that down. So I don't need that console log anymore. Um, so with that, now that we have that, what I can do is um, I need to do another one. So I'm going to say a uh, scroll link. So if you remember, our scroll link is that variable that we created all the way at the top. So for these links here and any other links like this that you might create throughout your website. So for each one of those, so I want to do a function for all of them. So for each one of my scrollings, so for each scroll link, I am going to do a function. Now for this function, I do actually need another variable. So I'm going to do a variable of section offset, which will equal to this hash offset top. Uh, okay, so I have my variable there. And so my and I'm, the reason I'm not making this bigger is because my menu sort of disappears. <laughs> I'm sort of stuck with it here. Um, so I'm doing a little bit of side scrolling. Um, so for each one of my scroll links, I do want to calculate the offset top from, you know, for each one of my sections. So where is my features? How far away from the top is my features? And how far away from the top is my pricing? Uh, so we know that as this goes down, the number gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's going to calculate the offset from the top. So it's going to calculate from here to here. This is where my features is starting. So it's going to see this is, I don't know what it is. Let's just say it's 300 pixels. It, we just want it to, to tell us what this distance is and how far this is from the top and pricing, how far that is from the top of my page. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to say if. So if my section offset is less than or equal to my scroll bar location. We want some stuff to happen, right? So if the section offset is less than 
or equal to, because it makes sense that it's equal to, we, the scroll bar location. So as we saw before, when we were going down, it's keeping track of how big that number is. So what I want to say is, if this number, the number we were calculating as we went down, is the same as how far away this features is from the very top of my page. So if this distance is the same as how far we've scrolled down, we want to change the link from here over to features. And if this, if we've gotten all the way down to the pricing, so the distance from all, you know, from here to here is equal to, or, you know, smaller than the, the where we are, we, how far we've scrolled down, then it's going to move over to the pricing. So to do that, we're going to say this, and this is where it gets a little weird. I'm going to say, um, cause with the active class, the active class isn't on the link itself. Whoops. Sorry. Where did I go? There we go. So, uh, right now we're dealing exactly with this, with this, right? Cause we're selecting our scroll and the active is not on the scroll. It's on the list item. And I'm trying to select things. There we go. So it's not on the scroll. It's on the li instead, instead of being on the link. So I don't want this active to be added or removed from my link. I want it to be added or removed from the list item. So I'm going to say from the, I'm going to select this parent. So the parent of this link, we're going to add class. You want to guess what it's going to be? We're going to add the class of active. So now when I scroll down, if all of this is working, when I get to here, the features should get that class added to it. There we go. I'm a little bit off, but we can play with that a bit. But you can see there, so now it gets it. And then when I get down to my pricing, that should click on, there we go. And now my pricing has it as well. So super, except you can probably see a big problem right now is they all are highlighted and it's not going away and now it's kind of broken. So luckily uh, we can also remove class. So we can also say this. So the parent again, except, so we're adding the class to features. We want to remove the, this active class from home. So the easiest thing to do in this case is to say all the siblings. So siblings. So we're saying this links parent. So the list items parent and the siblings. So when features gets there, both siblings. So any links that are in here that might have the active, we're going to remove class of active. And so now when I scroll down and I get to my features, it jumps over to features and you see it jumped. It removed the class from the siblings and it put it only on that one. And now when I scroll down even farther, it's going to jump once again. Boom. There we go. It's now highlighted the pricing instead. And of course, this has the smooth scrolling. And you can see that, ooh, there's a little bug there. Hmm. It's not scrolling down far enough. And actually, for, oh, for the pricing, let me just see. Hmm. Home, home's okay. Features. Do I need to move it all? Okay, so we can fix that actually. Uh, what I'm going to say is the section offset, we can just do like a minus, uh, minus, let's just try minus 20 and see what happens. Whoops. There we go. Ah, that fixed it. Um, See, so yeah, I'm just doing a minus 20 to make sure that when I get there, it actually is selecting. So, you know, there's that worked out a little better just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. And let's just see home. So that's good. It jumps to features. Actually, it works a bit better. It's jumping closer to where my padding is there. Pricing features home. Great. So you can see it's jumping back and forth and all of that. And that's how you do the automatic scrolling with jQuery. I hope that you found this video useful. If you learned something from it, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you found a project to implement that into, you know, link to it down in the, the comments and I'd be glad to check it out. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I do videos like this one every single Wednesday. So please consider subscribing and until the next video, take it easy.